When we begin to draw climate graphs, we first have to start with an axis. An axis of a climate graph will consist of three main axes. The bottom axis or the x-axis will form the basis of the climate graph associated with months of the year. So as you can see on the screen, I am beginning to add the first letter of every month of the year into the middle section of the bars that I have designated for this particular climate graph. It is also a good idea to label the axis at the bottom to make it clear to whoever is looking at the graph. We then must consider the left-hand axis, which is in this case for precipitation or rainfall. As you can see on the data on the top of the screen, I have circled the maximum number of rainfall that Liverpool has received. Therefore, I know that my climate graph needs to go up to that maximum number. I have decided to draw my axis and have the sections of the axis broken into tens. I think this will be easier to plot the rainfall or precipitation onto my climate graph. And I've also made sure that I am adding the correct geographical language to label that particular axis, in which case is precipitation, which we measure in millimetres. We can now begin by plotting our data onto our climate graph for precipitation. For the first month, January, the data tells us that Liverpool received 61 millimetres of precipitation on average during that month over a 30 year period. I indicate this by drawing a bar as wide as the month along the x-axis and still referring to the y-axis on the left hand side of the graph. It is also a good idea to draw these bars as wide as possible so that they are easier to draw and prepare you for the next bar. By the bars connecting, it allows the climate graph to be easy to read. As we continue to plot our precipitation onto our climate graph, you will note that I am moving from the left-hand side to the right-hand side axis. By the end, we will have 12 bars showing us the precipitation rates for Liverpool. We can now move on to the right hand side of our axis by beginning to plot temperature. As you can see, I have referred to my data and I have circled the maximum value for the temperature of Liverpool, which I need to go up to on my right hand axis on my climate graph. I have decided to go up in intervals of five in this particular example, and I'm remembering to label my axis so that anyone else who is looking at my climate graph understands what that right hand axis is being used for. When it comes to plotting our temperature data, we will mark our climate graph with small X's in the center of each month of the year. As you can see on the screen, I am constantly showing my temperature readings for Liverpool by this red X that I am putting in the center of each bar but I am constantly referring to the right hand axis for temperature this time and ignoring the left hand axis for precipitation. You will also note here that my temperature data is actually going through or on top of my climate graph precipitation bars. This is absolutely fine. I then will connect all the points together with a free handed line. And to finish off, a clear title linked to the particular location the climate graph is for. Now we have a completed climate graph, we can start to analyse our climate graph and practice some mathematical skills. One common GCSE question is when examiners ask us to state the maximum or minimum precipitation or temperature using a climate graph provided. In this example, if we can look at the left hand side of our axis for precipitation, we can search for the tallest bar and refer to our left hand axis. In this case then, the maximum precipitation for Liverpool is 90 millimetres. 
If we repeat the same process for temperature, we are then referring to our right-hand axis and looking now for the highest x's or points on our line. Again, in this case, our maximum temperature for Liverpool is 20 degrees. Alternatively, we can be asked to find the minimum precipitation or temperature using a climate graph. So again, if we are referring to our lowest bar on this climate graph and referring back to our left-hand axis for precipitation, we can see that Liverpool has a minimum precipitation of 46 millimetres. Again, if we do the same with temperature, referring to our right-hand axis this time, we are looking for our lowest score on our line, which is seven degrees Celsius. A more challenging question we may be asked is to state the annual precipitation for Liverpool. Annual means the total value of the entire year. So in this particular case, the examiner is looking for you to show some working out and some readings and interpreting your climate graph. You will need to find the precipitation rate for each month of the year, January, February, March, so on and so forth, all the way to December and add them all up to give you a total precipitation. Alternatively, we can be asked to find a range between our data sets. So in this particular example, if we are trying to find our temperature range, we are looking to take our maximum temperature reading away from our lowest temperature reading. Again, if we're considering temperature in this example, we need to be constantly referring to our right hand axis and ignoring the left finding our highest point in our line and the lowest point, writing them down to show our working out to gain those extra marks and then providing our answer by taking the maximum and the minimum away from each other.